And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Ray Shasho Show, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Each week, Ray spotlights in-depth interviews with legendary and -and up-and-coming authors and music artists. Ray also features the movers and the shakers of the music and publishing industries and suggests important methods for getting the most out of your public relations and marketing needs. Please welcome music journalist, author, and entrepreneur, Ray Shasho. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ray Shasho, broadcasting from BBS Radio, and welcome to the show, where we spotlight legendary and up-and-coming music artists and authors. Brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call us today at 941-877-1552 or visit www.publicityworksagency.com. Remember, we shine only when we make you shine. Cindy Blackman Santana is a virtuoso drummer whose artistry spans the realms of jazz and rock. As a band leader and as a musician, Cindy is a sound innovator with a passion for pushing creative boundaries and exploring movement and change. She is known for the nuances and color she brings her beats and fills as she is for the sheer power of her soulful playing. Santana has been creating magnificent musical time and space since the beginning of her career as a busking street performer in New York City in the 80s through the present day, touring the globe and making albums at the top of her game, including the critically acclaimed Another Lifetime. In addition to collaborating on stage and in studio with her own group, also known as Another Lifetime, Cindy was part of the Tony Williams Lifetime tribute band called Spectrum Road with Jack Bruce, Vernon Reed, and John Medeski from 1992 to 2007. And again in 2014 and 15, she was the drummer in Lenny Kravitz's band performing through multiple world tours and hit albums. In 2010, she was part of the all-star lineup performing Bitches Brew, a tribute to Miles Davis, seminal album staged at the San Francisco Jazz Festival and New York City Winter Jazz Fest. Most recently, Cindy has become the regular touring drummer for Santana, having met several years earlier at a festival in Europe while she was touring with Kravitz. Cindy first played with Santana in spring 2010 when drummer Dennis Chambers had a previous commitment. They have a great band vibe. It's nice to play with people who have grown together, built a sound together, and stayed together, she says. When that happens, you can create so many different levels of communication. That's why they've done, and I love reacting with it and being part of it. Electricity on stage generated chemistry off stage. Legendary guitarist Carlos Santana proposed to Cindy during a July 2010 concert, and they married in December. Looking ahead, they will collaborate artistically as well on projects that will no doubt reflect their shared passion for improvisation and belief in the transcendent nature of music. Cindy was an integral part of the new Santana Isley Brothers release, Power of Peace, featuring the song I Remember, which she wrote and sings and sings, write and sings. To me, she says, Music is completely spiritual. It's the way you connect with your higher self with the universe. It's also a way to share light with millions of people. They don't need to speak your language, have your beliefs, or be in the same place you are. The music speaks. It channels good energy and makes a difference in people's lives. Carlos and I are both conscious of doing that. The past few months have been a blur for Cindy Blackman Santana, who is currently touring and performing with her husband, Carlos Santana, is featured as a vocalist, drummer, and songwriter on Power of Peace. The new Santana Isley Brothers collaboration has been touring with their own band and recording tracks in the studio with legendary producer Narada Michael Walden. Together through Walden's Tarpon Records label, recently released the new single Fun Party Splash, featuring Carlos Santana on all digital platforms. Please welcome drummer and percussionist, Cindy Blackman Santana to the Ray Shasho Show. Hello, Cindy. Hi, and thank you for having me. And you've got a lot of things happening. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I really like yeah. about this interview? What I like really like about this interview is me and you were born the same year. I always love to talk to people my own age because you know most of the time <laughs> a lot of these legends are like you know they're getting in their sixties, late sixties, seventies. 
you know, and uh, it, it's always cool to, because, you know, we, we've experienced a lot of the same music and, you know, concerts and things like that. So, well, welcome to yeah, my awesome. age. <laughs> <laughs> Good reference points. <laughs> You were born in, in Yellow Springs, Ohio, which had a population of only about 3,500, uh, I think the census said in 2010. Yet, you, uh, David Chappelle, Richie Fure, who was in Buffalo, Springfield, and Poco, the actor John Lithgow, and many others were also from that uh, city. I find that incredible. for such a small... Yeah, and it's, it's, it's not even a city. They call it a large village. Um, and, it, and it's not changed very much because um, when I was uh, growing up, the population was three thousand. Wow! So, you know, really? They, it, it, it's not it's not really grown that much. It, it kind of stays, um, you know, small and quaint, and 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 it's nice because it's a it's a wonderful little oasis, and especially you know in in Ohio, which is um, very very conservative. Um, Yellow Springs is the opposite. It's really really completely liberal so it's <laughs> it's hmm. an interesting little little niche and it's, and it's very artistic too There's a lot of creative right. um things happening there a lot of creative people so it's it's, it's a nice little niche with, with such a small population you, you must have ran into those guys huh that david chappelle and richie fury and did you uh, run into those I guys no they weren't there no? they weren't there when i was when i was oh, okay up. no okay um I, I, I was born there, so um, right. you know I, I was there from 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 birth to, and I, I left when I was about eleven years old. So uh, I, at least Dave Chappelle, I know he got there after, way after I left. So right, right. Um, yeah. yeah, my cousins let, you... run into him though. My cousins oh, see really? him on the street all the time. <laughs> they tell me, yes. Yeah. <laughs> huh. you you left there and went to is it Connecticut? From from there and then uh, yes. yeah. And then, of course, yes, you got all your, your contacts. Go, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, um, Yeah. no problem. We went to Connecticut. Um, we, mm -hmm. we lived in a couple different different towns there. Um, and then from, from Connecticut, I, I moved to uh, to Boston to go to Berkeley College of Music. And then I, was, I, I went back yeah. to Connecticut just briefly for just a, a matter of months, maybe two months. And then I moved to New York. That's, and that's, that's a lot of your connections that you met were in New York, I, I'm assuming. A lot of people that you met there. Oh, absolutely. You, that's yeah. that's uh, you, where, it, where yeah, that's where it all happened, started to really, really happen. You've got a uh, a rather lengthy tour going on, and with with Santana, uh, I, is that the start of the tour on September 11th, or was it, is this continuing from uh, another leg of the tour? This is continuing. We've been on about oh, yeah. a three week, two and a half, three week uh, break, um, okay. and. Uh, we're uh, starting up again in, in uh, Anaheim, and then we go to uh, to Las Vegas, and we play the House of Blues there. So, um, yeah, this is a continuation. We, we've had a really nice um, amount of playing time and a really beautiful mm -hmm. run musically. So this this will all continue uh, over the course of the next couple of days. We start up again. Yeah, Santana plays a lot at the House of Blues and at uh, Mand Mandalay Bay, right? Exactly. And, and, yeah, he's, uh, Carlos yeah. has a residency there, and the, and uh, it happens uh, four times a year, which is which is really nice because it's an intimate place. Um, it's it's always packed, but it's great right. for the audience because they're really close to the band. It's great for the band too because you can really feel the audience. So uh, he, he calls it his laboratory. So it's a nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice, wonderful place to play. I, yeah, a lot of a lot of guys I've talked to love the casinos. Also, you know, they they love to play. They they love to play Vegas. There's more uh, more and more uh, rock legends that are playing Vegas, and I I think it's great. I think it's a great venue. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's nice that that there's a that there's a desire yeah. for for the music. I mean, I'm certainly not into the casino scene at all. Um, right. I, I don't gamble and won't gamble. It's just not on my radar. Right. But the thing is that they they love music, so you know um, that's perfect. It's perfect for us. Not only are you going to be there, but you're coming to Florida. You'll be at, in Jacksonville, uh, Orlando, and you're coming to the Tampa Bay area, uh, very close to me at Emily Arena. And then, of course, you'll be at Hard Rock in Hollywood as well. So we'll definitely have to check you out in Florida. Oh, perfect, perfect. Please do. Let us know that you're there. Say hello. Definitely. 
And then you'll, you'll be in Cancun also, right? Aren't you, don't you have a gig in Cancun? I believe we do, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little yeah. later. That's after the House of Blues, exactly. After the House of Blues gigs, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I recently interviewed Candace Knight, who performs with uh, her husband, Richie Blackmore. Uh, I've talked to Candace several times. Uh, so being married to Carlos now and being in the band, <laughs> do you get any kind of preferential treatment, or are you treated like all the other guys in the band? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, it's, it's really even. You know, it's even, right? It's I, I figured even. that. You know, it, it has to be, you know. Um, yeah. But but that's certainly the way it is, and and, and I I actually prefer that. Well, Carlos seems pretty laid back, you know. It, I, I saw Santana. I don't know how many times, probably more than anybody else, ever since the I don't know 1971 or something like that, way back when. And he's always been laid back, so he's, he must be pretty easy to work with. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's um, that's a, a wheel that was way in motion long before I came along. So yeah. they certainly had their own flow and, you know, um, the, the, the thing was, was, was rolling already. Right. You know, um, so, and the flow continues, you know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a different person, so I add whatever my personality brings. And, and the other new people add whatever their new personalities uh, bring to the situation but you know the the wheels keep turning and 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 the flow keeps going and and i think you know that says a lot for carlos's energy because he's been you know playing and 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 doing this for for such a long time um and you know with a lot of um passion you know and and a lot of success too so yeah it's 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 a nice um wheel that's that's in motion and it's great to 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 be a, on that wheel and to to help you know keep it rolling um it's it's really great yeah the energy is is off the hook <laughs> well you're a great drummer every you know i, oh, I I've, you. Seen, I've seen you everywhere you, you you know you've done a lot of collaborations and you, you know, of course with uh lenny kravitz you got you know your your videos with them. You're you're awesome drummer. You know every, everybody everybody loves you, and your hair is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I love your look. Your look is so cool, and you look great for your age, by the way. Because I can say that Wait, you look you. you look like you're in your thirties, man. <laughs> I was gonna say twenty seven never felt better. <laughs> All right, twenty seven. All right, well, twenty seven and holding. How's that? <laughs> How long did it yeah. take you to learn the Santana repertoire? I always wondered about you know when when a new musician comes into a you know legendary band, but I mean was it hard to, to learn some of the songs or not really? Um, you know, there's there's like I said, there was a wheel that was already in motion, and and when you have that, and when you have people yeah. that have been you know playing together for so long, because you know a couple of his members have played with him for like thirty years, so they just yeah. have things that they do naturally. So just to learn. You know where all the pieces come together, where all the the, the accentuations are, where all the um, um, uh, pulse changes are, where all the feel changes are. You know right. that that takes a, a a minute just to ingest that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's a natural thing because um, you know, like I said, when you have uh, a machine that's that's already uh, very well oiled. <laughs> Exactly. And you step in. You just have to learn where the curves, the curvatures are, and where the turns are, you know. And and, and then once you do that, um, you're all set to go. Yeah, I, I give you a lot of credit, though. You make it sound so easy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's incredible. Just just step into, you know. I, I've talked to people that were in, in like, uh, you know, a couple of different bands, you know, uh, and, and they, they say the same thing. You know, that they just step in and fill in for, you know, people and they just say the same thing. It's it's uh like you said, there's a wheel in motion already and you just gotta, you know, jump aboard, I guess. The uh um, Absolutely. You, you know what is it difficult to play drums um with a Congo player and the Timbalist player performing at the same time? I mean, does it does that you ever go off beat or anything with playing with these guys or 
How does that work? Oh no, that's not that's not difficult at all. Not with not with those two. Um, yeah. You know, uh, you just have to uh, uh, share the space. You know, um, mm-hmm. and allow the music to breathe. But but that's not difficult because they're both. Uh, Carl's incredible, um, and so is Paoli. Uh, right. So playing with them is it's um, a world of rhythm that just doesn't stop. You know. So it's yeah, it's awesome. You got that jazz lingo, you know, when you, when you mentioned space. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of friends with uh, uh, Billy Cobham, and uh, he's a good he's a good guy. We've talked, you know, many many times together on the phone, and have done interviews with him. And he teaches a lot. You know, he does he does a lot of these clinics and stuff. Is that is that something you would be into or start uh, teaching like maybe new drummers? I know we need new drummers and and you know new blood in there. You know, I've I've done some teaching okay. here and there, but right. I've done some teaching okay. here and I've done some teaching here and there, but um, uh, I you know I really only want to do it if there's somebody who's really really into it. It's not something that I would would just do uh, just to have something to do. You know, it would just take a, a special student or a special up and coming drummer for me to want to to do that. You know, right, um, right. I love doing clinics, and I've done clinic mm-hmm. tours. I've, I've played lots of clinics over the years. Um, not in the last couple of years, but you know, uh, uh, previously I, I've done a whole lot of clinics, um, and I love doing that because I love talking about drums. I love being in um, an atmosphere where people are are just totally about and into the drums. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are really exciting for me. Um, so yeah, and I, and I look forward to doing more of those and I, I plan on doing more of those because it's, it, it's a, a wonderful way to, um, really talk about the history of drums, the lineage and, you know, where, where I see things and then to, to interact with the audience too, you know, you can also gain some other points of view, but it's just a nice way to, to share, um, a lineage um, of an art form that I think is really beautiful. Right. Yeah, I agree with you. It, it, I, I think uh, Billy did. He did some online teaching, you know, like by Skype, and he's got this big thing he does like every once a year. Where I mean, it's for all types of musicians, for every instrument, you know. But a lot of these guys are already have some, you know, lots of talent. I think they just want to take it to the next level. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, we, I, I think in an interview you said we definitely need more young young drummers out there, some new blood coming in, and definitely more females for sure. I've you know? seen some. You know, I've, I've been blessed because I've seen some really incredible uh, drum clinics. I've, I've, you know, over the years, um, mm-hmm. I've seen uh, Tony Williams do clinics. I've seen Elvin Jones do clinics. Yep. Um, and. Uh, it, it's just it's really amazing to um experience them on on that kind of intimate level and i say intimate because you know they're usually not playing with bands um so you really just get to hear the drums and hear their approach you know and and elvin was was very um insightful and and interesting and and creative you know he talked mm-hmm. about the color of sound and he he talked about that in videos too but to see him do it in person was was just really ama- amazing because different uh elements of the drum kit to him are are different colors right you right. know so yeah it's 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 a great thing i love it yeah i was watching a show i i think it's uh i forgot the name of it but these these are people that are kind of geniuses and it's it's like a game show and this one girl can um uh, see color in music she can actually see the color in music, and I thought that was really fascinating. It is, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. To be able to do that is incredible. You uh, you, you talked about Tony Williams. Uh, he was a big part of your life, and you, you ended up recording a tribute album to Tony, which was incredible. Um, and another guy that was very big in your life was Art uh, Blakey, right? Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. The, the the two of them are incredible. I mean, Tony's my biggest drum hero, and and mm-hmm. Art Blakey is like my my dad. 
you know, we, we get to be really close. <laughs> How and cool I is that? For the kids. <laughs> I, oh, totally. I, I was at his house uh, all the time when he wasn't on tour, you know. Um, and so to to be around him that much was, was amazing. I rehearsed his band before, you know, I, I he, he used to let me sit in. Um, and I used to go see him all the time, you know, always sitting by the drums. And I remember one time, one amazing time that I went to see Art was at this club, which is, it, it, it closed uh, in the in the early 90s. Um, it was called McHale's in, in New York. And uh, I felt stuck with my comping. And so I went downstairs. Art was in the basement, you know, before playing. And I, I told him, I said, I'm, I'm feeling really stuck uh, with my comping, can you give me some tips? And he said, go upstairs and sit next to the drums and wait. And so I did. I went upstairs and I grabbed <laughs> the closest seat, which was right next to the drums. Um, and he came upstairs and he proceeded to play so incredibly. And every time he wanted me to check out something, he'd look over at me and wink. <laughs> so, you know, the the lesson was was amazing and and the lessons with him always continued whether they were life lessons um or direct music lessons it was just incredible to be around him so you know and then being in, on the New York scene not only did you have Art Blakey and Tony Williams mm-hmm. but you had Elvin Jones you had Philly Joe Jones Roy Haynes Max Roach um Ed Blackwell um uh, Louis Hayes Jimmy Cobb um, Al Foster, Billy Hart, I mean, so many uh, amazing musicians that you could just go see, you know, and that's just the drummers. Um, yeah. But it was it was a, a, a great thing to be exposed to, and it was a great time in the history of, of not only music, but in the history of jazz music, because there were so many innovators who created that music who were still alive and playing and very vibrant, you know, so it was amazing to 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 watch Art Blakey or to to watch Dexter Gordon or Dizzy Gillespie. You know these people created bebop. You know they created exactly. jazz. You know yeah. um, to go see uh, Herbie and Tony and Wayne and Ron. You know perform to see Freddie Hubbard um, to see Clark Terry. All these different people that you could go see. I even saw Sam Jones to go see him was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, McCoy Tyner, you know, so so yep. many people, um, yep. and like I said, these are the <laughs> innovators who, uh, most of them are the innovators who created the music. So it, it it was really incredible, and it's amazing that the music has grown so far in such a short uh, time um, historically. When you look at the 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 amount of time that uh, jazz has been ex- in existence, and bebop has been exist in existence, and then the modern form of that has been in existence it's, it's very short actually yeah so there's been a lot of a lot of uh, 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 creativity and innovation that has happened really very quickly oh I love jazz I love fusion I've always loved fusion and progressive rock which is very intricate you know playing it reminds me a lot of, of jazz you know because they, they get into a lot of that you know well it is because you know I mean a lot of people don't don't give him credit but but a jazz drummer is the one who created jazz rock and that's right. tony williams and yep. miles got it from tony you know yep. miles didn't wasn't playing electric stuff before he saw tony williams lifetime right um and mahavishnu uh was john mclaughlin's group and yep. he was playing with lifetime so that's all tony's concept you know, um, so all those bands, all those '70s bands, whether they realize it or not, they they owe lifetime, and all the bands after that, you know, they they owe a great debt to to what Tony did and what what John McLaughlin did and what Larry right. Young did in that first band, and then what Jack Bruce added in that band uh, yep. when he came along. He came along in the second record. The first record was called Emergency, um, and that was just a trio. And then the second record was called Turn It Over, and that was with Jack added. Yep. Um, and so, you know, what they created just really opened up a whole um, another realm of of expression in terms of adding different elements into the music, you know, and, and it was exactly what Tony called it, jazz rock. But it was also more because they played um, rhythms from, from other uh, uh, cultures as well, uh, you know, like um, 
Brazilian rhythms, um, mm-hmm. Indian rhythms. Um, they played uh, funk rhythms. They played all kinds of stuff. You know, exactly. you can even yeah. uh, see traces of classical music in there. So, yep. you know, there, there's a whole world that that they really, really opened up, and 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 it gave us um, many, many more choices. Your new collaborator, uh, am I saying his name right? Is it Narada? Narada, Michael Walden. Uh huh. Okay, uh-huh. He, and he he replaced uh, Billy Cobham, I think, in Mahavishnu. He yes, took, he, he did. And he's, yeah. I, I love his I love his playing. I loved what he brought to that mm-hmm. band because his feel uh, to me um, is oh, he's really incredible. loose and open, and he's mm-hmm. incredibly powerful. But he's also very musical. So you know, I, I really love what he brought to that band. Well, he's got a huge history. I mean, besides being a you know a fantastic producer, he's played on so many albums. I I, I know he's played with. Uh, uh, besides Mahavishnu, uh, yeah, she's played with so many people, including he played with uh, Jeff Beck. I mean, on one Jeff of my Beck, favorite Jeff Beck albums the, too. The Wired you album, know, he's, right? He's great, great musician, absolutely. Yeah, he was on the Wired album. And he yeah, played with. Uh, oh gosh, I'm, I'm trying to remember now. Um, one of my favorite guys who was on this. One of my favorite albums was Spectrum, the Spectrum album with uh, uh-huh. Jack Bruce, uh, not for Jack Bruce. Uh, Oh my goodness! I'm having one of those senior moments. <laughs> I had to talk about age, right? <laughs> With Billy Cobham, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm trying to think of the name of the guy uh, I'm trying to think about, and I can't. You know, he passed away. It'll come to me anyway. Um, anyway, I want to talk about um, your new song, your new single as well, which is really cool. I, I, I love it. It's a it's a real. It, it needs to be played every summer for sure. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> what, 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 and Carlos, of course, is on the uh, on the song. What, what support you have marrying Carlos Santana? <laughs> you know, I mean, well, that's, that's awesome. It's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it 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 is awesome, but that actually had absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, when I when I uh, met Carlos, I was looking for really. And I wasn't really looking when I met him, but <laughs> right. what I was missing in my life was somebody who was uh, on the same spiritual path and on a exactly. very you guys are a lot path. alike. You are and, a lot alike. And so, yeah. well, yes. And and yeah. when I met him, um, it, I mean, as great as he is musically, it had nothing to do with with that. That's icing right. on the cake. It, right. Really, it was for me um, what I felt and saw from the person, you know, who's off stage, and and he exudes exudes his spirituality on stage as well but you know what got me was um the 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 spiritual path that that he was on and, and, and what i felt about him spiritually um and so that to me is is um the the cherry and then the, the icing is that he's also an incredible musician right you know? Yeah, he, I love Carlos. He's he's always been one of my favorites. My, my I love mom, him too. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> to be at all of him and then marry him, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> I, how long was your? Did you have a long romance or a short romance before you got married? Uh, our romance was was really fast because um, was it fast? Um, we married seven months after we met. Right. And you know. Uh, I know I heard it from my side, and I'm sure he heard it from his side as well. Wait a minute, seven months? You don't even know this person. You just met, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. But I, you know, I, I just felt that he was at a point in his life where um, he had gone through wherever he went through, and right. he knew what he wanted. And yep. I was at the same point. Mm-hmm. To me, I hadn't been married, but I had been engaged, and I had, had you know, long relationships. Um that were um, treated as though we were married. Uh, right. And, you know, I at that point knew what I wanted and knew what I didn't want. So um, I think neither one of us felt that there was a need to uh, belabor something that we both felt in our hearts was right. Mm-hmm. That, now, did he, did he meet you when you were with uh, Lenny? Yeah, we first met uh, actually in in 2005, and I was right. touring with Lenny 
Um, right. And we were playing a concert in Germany, and the right. other band on the on the uh, uh, stage, the same stage that day, was the Santana Band. And my meeting with him was just a brief hi and mm-hmm. nice to meet you. I, there were actually no sparks. I was um, kind of dating somebody at that time, and and right. he was 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 married at that time. So mm-hmm. it was I, I wasn't even looking. I'm I'm a very monogamous person, <laughs> so I wasn't looking. <laughs> that I knew in the band was the person who was the drummer at the time, Dennis Chambers. And right. we were buddies because uh, I've known Dennis since I was about 14. So oh. I was really kind of just hanging with Dennis, and we were watching videos of Tony Williams and, and you know, talking about our love for Tony and, mm-hmm. um, you know, sharing stories about Tony. Uh, and then I went to, to, to play my concert. They played their concert, and that was it. Um, but it wasn't until uh, 2010... So five years later, when when Dennis couldn't make a a, a gig and Carlos needed a sub, and uh, he called me to do it, um, and then things were different on his end. They were different on my end. Uh, I was I had been single for for a bit of time there, and he was uh, divorced at that time um, and single. So uh, we uh, just. You know, sparks started to happen. There was a chemistry there, and um, right. the rest is kind of history. <laughs> That's awesome. Do, do, do you have any uh, Latin blood in you at all, or uh, <laughs> I do now? You do now. <laughs> we, have, we, <laughs> we have a little bit. It's a tinge of that, and uh, uh, my mom was giving me art history, and you know, we have. Uh, cultures actually we have uh african for sure um mm-hmm. native native american right uh, we have some european um uh, s- some uh, scottish some irish and uh, a little bit of spanish a little bit of spanish is, is he teaching you a little bit uh a little bit yeah, yeah? i mean I t- spanish was my first language was my not my first language my language in high school of choice. right right um right and I lived in in Harlem for for uh, about ten years, and there were right. uh, a lot of Dominicans in my area, and they thought that I was Dominican, so they used to speak to me in Spanish. So at that time, I could actually speak Spanish fairly well, well enough to you know to get around, to go to stores, and to take mm-hmm. taxis, and to do what I needed to do. Sure. Um, but then I forgot it all after I moved away. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know. Um, he gives me a couple little Spanish lessons here and there, and I, and I yep. pick up a couple things. But um, mostly we speak English. Well, she, yeah. My my mom was uh, Cubana. She was Cuban. So I learned, you know, oh, from cool. her. Yeah. I grew up in a Cuban household. So uh, I ate very good as a kid. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I bet Cuban you did. Food. Uh, Cuban food is <laughs> great. I'm, I'm sure you ate very well. As a matter of fact, my my brother was supposed to go to Cuba on uh, Monday, and they just canceled his trip. He took a, he was going to take a cruise because he was born in Cuba, and oh, he was going to see my 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 grandmother's uh, old um, apartment is still there in really good shape. So he was going to go check it out and everything, but they canceled the wow. trip. Wow! So they got to reschedule. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully yeah. when the weather's better, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But you can you can definitely pass for Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I can teach you the Cuban accent if you want. <laughs> I've been told. I, I I went to Brazil and and they told me yeah. I was Brazilian. Brazil also. You, know, you can be you can be Brazilian as well. Yeah. We went That's, to. Uh, I was over there with Steve Ture and and Buster Williams and, and right. we wanted to go to the favelas because they were rehearsing for Carnival. So they told us to you know put on the funkiest jeans and old sneakers and take all our jewelry off if we had any. Right. Um, and so, you know, they, they said, um, Cindy, you can probably do, you can probably walk around anywhere you want. Just don't talk. <laughs> as long as they don't hear your accent, they're going to think you're from here. That's so true. like you know what you, where you're going and what you're doing, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I call myself a, a chameleon because I could kind of, I don't, I don't care what race, what um, level of income you have, where, where you're from, I can mix right in. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good thing. The Santana Isley Brothers collaboration is incredible. Uh, the album is called Power of Peace. 
Um, you've got a lot of great cover songs. One of my favorites is Mercy, Mercy Me, the Marvin Gaye classic. You've got a Billy uh, Holiday song. Uh, you've got Muddy Waters, Stevie Wonder's Higher Ground, which is also another one of my favorites. That must have been uh, a fun album to do. I think you did 16 songs in four days, is what Carlos said. Yes, we did. Yes, yeah, the band was on fire. You know, it's, it's a great record. Um, and to to be able to, to uh, play with Ron, it's an incredible uh, um, balladeer, you know. He can really carry a melody. Um, so, you know, when you have two people who really carry melodies, Carlos and Ronnie, together, it really creates um, some, some beautiful synergy, you know, and uh, Ernie is this, as well, he's a fantastic mm-hmm. guitar player, um, so his addition is, is amazing, and um, the songs are all great, and, and, and they're beautiful, the music, so that record is it's one of my favorites, um, I really love that whole collaboration and, and all of the music that came out of it. Oh, it's incredible. Another favorite, Gypsy Woman. That's another one of my favorites. Oh, yeah, Gypsy Woman is beautiful. I love that vibe. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's really wonderful. Carlos had some, some really um, great ideas for not only the songs, but, you know, for the feels and, and, and playing them, you know, in really musical ways. So, it you know, uh, and that, that is one of the one of the songs that... that um, came out in, in a really, really soulful way. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a great album. I love the album. Uh, it'd be nice, it'd be cool to see you guys tour with the Isley Brothers. That, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. We, You know, they sat in with us a, a couple times, um, and that's all that's been thus far. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't get to see, we don't get to see the Isley Brothers too much anymore, you know? Cut out a little bit. Yeah, I know. I you, so did you. <laughs> hurricane starting. <laughs> I am on my hurricane. cell phone. Are oh, you on your cell phone? Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just find one area maybe that uh, won't break up. I'm actually in a car. We're we're on the way to the airport because we we. Oh, are you? <laughs> well, yeah. We're getting ready to start our our uh, our tour. Carlos has a lot of uh, press that he's going to do in L.A. for the Dolores Huerta movie that he produced. Right. Awesome. Um, which, if you haven't heard about that movie, uh, no, I haven't heard about it. It's a oh, it's a must see movie. Um, Dolores Huerta, is the the person who was really the engine behind Cesar Chavez and and the the Yes We Can, the Cesar Puerta slogan. Right. It's her slogan. Um, she came up with that, and hmm. she's like the really the driving force. Um, and she's eighty seven, still a real soldier in her and and fighter for civil. Um, equality and and mm-hmm. and um, workers' rights, and she she's just really amazing. So, this is a movie that's a real must see. Oh, is the movie out? It's coming out. Uh, okay. I think in a, in a in a week or so. Right. I don't know the exact date, um, but yeah, it's coming out very soon. Right. What's the name of it? It's called Dolores. Okay. All right. We'll be looking for that for sure. Yeah, you know, you, 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 you made a statement that is so true. <clears throat> you know, I love music since I was a, a kid, and if it wasn't for music, I probably wouldn't be around today. I mean, music has is, is guided me kind of like a religion. Uh, you said music is a way to share light with millions of people. They don't need to speak your language, uh, have your beliefs, or to be in, in the same place you are. The music speaks, it channels good energy, and makes a difference yeah. in people's lives. That That's, that's such a powerful statement you know that you oh made. thank you thank you it's incredible you. and it does yeah, yeah. It it's does. very healing it's a healing force i mean if, if you know it doesn't matter you know what side of politics or religion you're in if you guys share the love of music that's all that matters pretty much that's right that's right that's right <laughs> yeah and you know most of us timeline our lives to what songs we're playing on the radio at different stages of our lives, because I've, I've talked to a lot of people that do that, and that shows you how powerful it is. That's right. That's right. It, it's and like I said, it's it's a healer, and, and it you know it, it brings people together. Um, it heals people. It uh, it it 
it's a communicator, and uh, you know, it, it, it breaks, it, 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 it cuts down barriers and walls and veils that people uh, have and build up. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do worry a little bit about the uh, the genre of jazz, rock, and the blues. You know, because it's it's not uh, it's not prevalent. You know, in the mainstream like it used to be. You know, it should be. You know, and that's that's a shame. It should be, but 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 uh, don't worry too much because I'm still breathing. As long as I'm still breathing, <laughs> jazz will be alive. We, we still have you. We still have Carlos. We have guys in the blues. We have uh, Buddy Guy still around. So. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Are you are, are you getting out of the car and going to the airport now? Do you need to get off? We are. Okay. <laughs> I'm so let, sorry, let, but yes, we are. I didn't okay. know that our, our flight was leaving so early, which is why I agreed to this particular time slot. Right. Um, and when, when when our flight info came in, I thought, okay, well, I'll just do the interview in the car, which sure. you know I've done so far. Um, yep. And I hope you guys don't mind. I'm really excited and, and honored to be to be here and to talk with you. Um, I hope you check out Fun Party Splash. I have a new record that's going to come out uh, following Fun Party Splash. Okay. Um, with, with more vocal songs, more instrumentals. Uh, Carlos is playing on the instrumentals and the vocals. Uh, John McLaughlin's on it. Vernon Reed. Oh, awesome! On it. Um, Great. Yeah, host of people. Yeah, host of people, and um, really just you know very excited about about that, and very excited about the power of peace. Uh, we've also been in the studio recording the next Santana record. So right. that's oh, going to come out too. Um, yeah, that's going to be really exciting. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff you know happening, a lot of projects going on. Tell, tell Carlos I was very excited when he did that reunion album. And, cause I, I, um, I, I've interviewed Greg Rowley a few times, and to, to, just to see the guys back together again was incredible. Neil Sean. Oh, I will. And, Absolutely. Yeah. I certainly I, will. I really love that album, <laughs> and, you know. Um, I'm a Santana fan from way back. Cindy, thank oh, you so wonderful. much, man, for, for being on the show today, for all the great music you bring us, and, and good luck on the road, and uh, we'll, we'll see you in Florida. Oh, thank you. I hope so, and please please do come to the show, and you know, please let us know so we can you know, sort you out with, with passes and whatever it is you need, and, and, it, and I'd love to, to shake hands and meet you in person, and, and you know, it would it, be uh, wonderful to connect that way as well. That'll be awesome. Thank you so much, Cindy. Have a great have a great flight and everything, and a great tour. Oh, thank you. Thank you so right. much. <laughs> Take care. Bye bye. Okay, you too. Have a beautiful day. Bye. You too. Good luck. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. You can purchase the Fun Party Splash single on Amazon.com and on iTunes. Uh, for more information about Cindy Blackman Santana, please visit her social media pages or her website at www.cindyblack. BlackmanSantana.com. You can also purchase the latest album by the Isley Brothers and Santana. Fantastic collabor- collaboration called Power of Peace, also at Amazon.com. Very special thanks to the great Billy James of Glass Onion PR for arranging this interview with Cindy Blackman Santana and Doug and Don Newsom with BBS Radio for making it all happen every show. Please join me bi-weekly, Mondays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on the Ray Shasho Show. If you have comments or suggestions or would like to be a guest on the Ray Shasho Show, call 941-877-1552 or email us at raypublicityworksagency.com. And please don't forget to purchase a copy of my book entitled Check the G's, The True Story of an Eclectic American Family and Their Wacky Family Business. Or the second edition, entitled Wacky Shenanigans on F F Street. Proud to be politically incorrect in Washington, D.C., available now at Amazon.com. You'll live it. You can also listen to all my past interviews at www.bbsradio.com backslash The Ray Shasho Show. And also on YouTube. Every interview is on YouTube. www.youtube.com backslash user backslash rock Raymond 2011. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Ray Shasho Show. Brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call 941 877 one five five two or visit us at publicityworksagency.com. 
specializing in author and music artist publicity plans. We shine when we make you shine. Join Ray Shasho every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on PBS Radio Station 1.